Hello everyone, I welcome all of my viewers to a new video. In this video, we are going to tackle a vulnerable machine with a difficulty level easy. You have to download the OVA image from Vulnhub. If you have not yet familiar with this Vulnhub, then watch out for my previous videos. Once you had downloaded it, you needed to set up the server. It is pretty easy to set up the server within VirtualBox. Launch VirtualBox. Click on Tools and then click on Import and import the OVA file. Once you are done with these, click on Setting and change the network adapter to the host only adapter. Make sure your Kali Linux machine, from where you perform an attack, and your vulnerable machine are in the same network. Once you are done with settings up, let's start the virtual machines. As you can notice, our vulnerable machine is ready and we have a login screen that prompts username and password. Enumeration Our first step is to identify the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. Open a terminal and run NetDiscover-i, and then specify the network interface name, which is ETH1. From the scan result, we have discovered our target IP address, which is 192.168.162.6. Now, let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open. Scanning the network is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous NMAP tool. Where, hyphen SS is used for TCP SYN scan. It is a quick, default, and most popular scan that has the ability to scan thousands of ports. Hyphen SC is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts, and hyphen SV enables version detection, which will detect what versions are running on what port. And hyphen P hyphen is used to select all ports. From the network scanning, we have spotted two open ports. Port 22 TCP running an SSH service, which means, that if you have a valid credential, then it will be easy to gain login access to the server. Port 80 TCP running an HTTP service, which indicates that there is some vulnerable website being hosted. So let's take a look at the web content running on port 80. To look at the contents ourselves, we can open a web browser of our choice, and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. Upon attempting to access the web page through a browser window, we are presented with the following error. Here, we can't connect to the server at deathnote.vuln. This type of error appears due to two underlying reasons. The first one is, if we have mistyped the URL address in our URL search bar, so that the DNS servers can't find the associated IP address for the mistyped name, or the second reason is, that we never entered any hostname like deathnote.vuln into the search bar but the website expects us to. This type of problem can be fixed by modifying the local DNS file named hosts located in the etc directory. Open a terminal and then type nano and then specify the path of the hosts file. Now, add the IP address with its associated hostname in the hosts table, which would allow your web client to visit the website which was previously reporting an error. Now save it using Ctrl plus X and hit Enter. You can verify the hosts table using the cat command. Once this configuration is complete, we can proceed to reload the target's web page and verify if it loads successfully or not.
Since the requested hostname now has an association in your host's file, the website can load without any issues. After analyzing the URL at the top of the window, I confirm that the running website might be created using WordPress CMS. As we knowledge, WordPress websites can be an easy target as they can easily be left vulnerable. So, we ran the WP Skin tool on the target application to identify known vulnerabilities. WP Scan is used to check if the running site is vulnerable to the WP version and check if a theme and plugin are up to date or known to be vulnerable. Open a new terminal and then run WP Scan hyphen hyphen URL and then specify the URL of the WordPress site. From the output, we have noticed that the running WordPress site is not vulnerable to its WP version but we got something interesting and useful mistake which can help us in terms of a foothold on the server. They are like Headers, which indicates that the running server is hosted using Apache. XML RPC is enabled, but it is not useful at this moment. The WordPress README text is enabled, which contains the procedure of installation of WordPress. The upload directory has listening enabled, which means we can directly access the content within the WordPress directory. Some other services are enabled, let's have a look at them also. Now, let's enumerate the target URL. There might be any hidden or hardly accessible directories and pages, and that can be done through directory busting. Using GoBuster as our tool of choice, we can use the following switches for the script to get the fastest, most accurate results. Where, dir is used to specify the mode of enumeration, hyphen u is used to specify the target URL, and hyphen w are used to specify the path of the word list. As a result of directory busting, we obtained a WP admin page. As we don't have a valid username and password, so we can't get login access. Since we have performed the directory busting on the WordPress directory, it means there might be some hidden or hardly accessible directories and pages that exist on deathnote.volen. From the result of directory busting, we obtained the robots.txt file. Let's dig into this file and find out if there is any sensitive information that might help us in foothold. Let's have a look. From robots.txt, we discover another hint. The hint seems to be like an image file that has been mistakenly added to the target application. So, let us open the file on the browser. As a result, there seems to be like contain some error while I try to open the file. So, I decided to download the image file on our Kali machine for further analysis. So open a new terminal and then type w get and paste the URL of the image file. You can find out the downloaded file in the Kali directory. Let me open this image file from here. As a result, the same error occurs. There might be some problem with the file. Let me run the file command to determine the type of file. From the output, we discovered that the file is in the form of ASCII text, which means it is a text file. Rename the file format from .jpeg to text. The hint message indicates us a piece of information that could help us log in into the target application. Previously, we have seen the user.txt file, 
exist within the upload directory. Let us open the user.txt file in a new tab. As you can see, few users are listed within this word list. What if we had a word list for passwords, we could perform a brute force attack to obtain access to the network. Foothold While exploring the upload contents, I have identified that the notes.txt file might be a word list that may contain some passwords list. Now, we have word lists for usernames and passwords. So, let's perform a brute force attack to get a valid username with its respective password. Before that, we have to download these files using the wget command line utility tool. The mostly used tool is Hydra, which allows us to perform various kinds of brute force attacks using word lists. Where hyphen capital L is used to load several logins from the specified word list. Hyphen capital P is used to load several passwords from the specified word list. From above, we have discovered a username and its password that is marked in bold. Now, we have a valid username and its corresponding password to get log into the server via the SSH client tool. So, we can try to log into the server. The login was successful. Next, run the ls command to list the files and the directories. As a result, we found the user flag. Let's have a look at the user flag by running the cat command followed by the user flag file. The content of the user flag seems to be like a hint, which is encoded with the help of the brain fuck decoder algorithm. To decode the text, we can take help from online decoders. As you notice, a message appears after decrypting it. Privilege Escalation Let me run the ID command to find out the user and group names, and numeric IDs like UID, or group ID of the current user or any other user on the server. Since user L does not have pseudo user privilege, we will identify further information about the target machine, which could be helpful for gaining root access. Let's identify the rights and privileges of the current user by executing the sudo-l command. The output displays that the running user does not have the right to run the sudo command, which means there might be another user which consists of permission to run sudo commands. To get to know what is the name of the user which consists of sudo permissions, you can find them in the home directory. Run the ls command to list the directories within the home directory. There are two directories, one is Kira and another one is L. It means the user Kira might consist of the root permission. We don't have access to the user Kira, yet we can still check the files inside it. Change the directory to Kira and then run ls-al to list all hidden directories within it. There are nothing special files, except the kira.txt file. Let me have a look at it using the cat command. This shows an error, because we don't have the right to open it. It means we have to switch the user to kira, but we don't have the password. There is a way to switch the user to kira, if there have a loophole while configuring the SSH service. The configuration files for the SSH service are stored within the .ssh directory. As you can notice there is a directory named .ssh which contains access credentials for SSH protocol.
Change the directory to .ssh and then run ls-al to list all hidden directories within it. The .ssh directory contains an authorized keys file, which means the file contains public keys for public key authentication. Let me have a look at it. As you can see, userl has permission to access through the SSH client. Before that, we have to add this authorized key to the .ssh directory exists within the user l directory. Change the directory to the l directory. Now run ls-al command to list the hidden files and directories. As you can notice, there is also a .ssh directory existed within the l directory. So, we have to change the directory to .ssh. Here create a new file for authorized keys with the help of VI text editor. Here paste the content of authorized keys that exists within kara slash .ssh directory. Now save it. We can verify it using the cat command. As this file does not have executable permission, so we have to set permission using the chmod command. Now run the ssh client tool to switch the user to Kira. We have successfully switched the user to Kira. Now, we can read the content within the Kira.txt file. This file contains some binary text, which seems to be encoded using the base64 algorithm. Let me decode it. From the output, we have discovered that there is an OPT directory that might contain something special. Let me change the directory and also list the files and directory. Here is another directory. Let me change to this directory. Directory L contains two more directories. Let's have a look. The fake notebook rule contains two files. Among them, one is a music file and another one is a hint, which is in form of text. Let me have a look. What are the hints? The hint emphasizes us to use the Cyber Chef tool, which means there might be an encoded text that exists here. Let me run the file command to determine the type of file. The case.wave is not an audio file, it is a text file. Let me open it using the cat command. The case.wave contains hexadecimal digits which can be decoded using the Cyber Chef. Now open Cyber Chef. Search from hex. Now drag from hex and drop to recipe. Input the hexadecimal digit to get the output. The output seems to be in form of base64. Let me decode it. Once you decoded it, you noticed the password for the user Kira. Now run sudo -l to list the allowed and forbidden commands for the invoking user on the current host. Kira has all permission, which means we successfully escalate the highest privilege. To obtain the root flag, simply change the directory to the root path. Permission denied error occurs. This can easily be fixed by running the sudo su command. Congratulations! We obtained both flags. If you have any doubts or queries related to this video, write me a comment in my comment section.